I don't feel like I do anything that is formal. I don't meditate. I don't I don't sit and focus on specific areas to kind of calm myself down or to kind of split the thoughts that you need. But I remember, funnily enough, I remember when we first started working from home as a result of COVID, I remember Lee saying to me that he used to spend so much time on the phone and he would pace pace around his house, pace around. He, I think he used to say to me, he used to wear out his carpets. And for some reason, it always stuck with me. So this picture Lee running back and forth across his front room, like just... <laughs> putting holes in his not much running that goes on with it something he said to me as a result of that was i think i've spoken to you before about kind of how you dealt with being so engaged all the time like quite often you talk you talk about how you didn't really get much time to yourself to kind of kind of do much or breathe and you used to say well are you i would make the excuse to walk around my house and i would start doing that on the phone i would start walking from room to room rather than just going backwards and forwards because that meant that you could kind of de-stress from being in the work environment that was your desk, but also you could multitask by having the conversation at the same time. And that's something that since then I've always done. Once an hour, I try and do it every hour. I'll get up and I'll um, go and get a drink or uh, there'll be other reasons I need to get up. The door might go or I might need the toilet or you know whatever. Somebody in the house might need a hand with something that I'm sure most people that work from home can relate to um, as long as you don't try and do all three of those things at the same time yeah of course but i try and get i try and find every hour is probably a bit of a stretch i'd say maybe four of the seven hours i'm working i'll try and do it but i'll, I'll try and take five minutes max maybe 10 depending on what what it is to just to kind of stretch my legs and stretch my body out and just kind of go for a walk and come back and reassess now importantly i don't do that when i'm in the middle of something so if, I've, if I'm going to start something that I know is going to take me some time, if it's over an hour, then I have to mentally prep myself for when I'm going to have to start to do that. Like today, I had a report that I knew was going to take me, I estimated six hours, and there was different sections of it. I managed to do it in four. Nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, I knew that I logged on at eight o'clock for work. I opened it up, and I did what I did was I did the first... 10% of this report and then timed how long it took me to do that first 10%. And I'm quite analytical like this. I'll do this all the time. And I realized that the first 10% took me 20 minutes. And I was like, cool, that's quick. That's like three and a half hours. If I, if I can kind of be about 200 minutes, which is nearly three and a half hours. I was like, well, that's not bad. I said, but that obviously relies on not getting interrupted, keeping that concentration and that momentum going the whole time. So I said, okay, I'll go from six hours to four. And I made sure I took those regular breaks at fair intervals of time. So if I ever got interrupted by a phone call or uh, a Teams message or an email that I needed to look at, I would then take the time to review that thing, deal with it, and then take a break to kind of reset. And I found that that just kept me engaged to keep going. So I don't, it's a very long winded answer for me to say that I don't really do much formal that people would list as mindfulness, but. I think that's kind of the the act, uh, the gift of the of the act, right? You kind of find ways that help make it work for yourself rather than just following a, a platform for it. <laughs>